Hello, everyone. My name is Gabriel Altit, and I'll be going over the sequence of acquisition of images for uh, studies uh, involving participants that are in the adult age. Uh, and so this module is for training of uh, some of the technologists that will be doing some of the echoes um, for the neocardiolab. So uh, upon starting, I just want to mention that if you go on the website of neocardiolab, so neocardiolab.com, and you go into the section research, and then um, you go into the SARAB study. I will be centralizing a lot of the information uh, regarding uh, the protocol for specifically that study, which recruits adults um, uh, and mothers. So you will see that I have to put a link such as the review of the adult echo section, uh, the review of nebology, uh, the nebology in French and English, our echo protocol, which is outlined here. Uh, with all the views. And if you want to take a look, there's also some of the measurements that we do uh, uh, once these views are acquired. So you can see all the list of measurements that we do here, which may give you a sense also of some of the um, image acquisitions that are necessary in order to do this, this image acquisition. Uh, and the data collection is listed here. So let's say you don't know what's the eccentricity index, you can go into the atlas and you're going to see how we do the eccentricity index in this context. Um, you will find that there's an uh, entire review of adult echo section in which we have normal adult echo. Um, and you're going to see that the views are listed here. Um, so, for example, the parasternal long axis view outlines here uh, some of the views that we're doing uh, and the measurements that we will be doing uh, based on these views. Um, and today um, I will be going over one echo that uh, I've done for the purpose of outlining some of the views that we're doing. So this was a test subject. We usually will make sure that uh, there is no identifier um, outlined on the clip, but the first clip would include uh, the study ID. So for example, for the SARAB study, we would do SARAB number one or SARAB number three or whatever is the study ID. We would put the blood pressure at the time of the echo, the height of the patient and the weight of the patient in order to calculate eventually the body surface area and Z scores. So we start with a regular parasternal long axis view. We then do a par parasternal long axis view with color. We then do a zoom of the aortic valve in order to be able to measure the aortic valve and the LV alpha track. Uh, again, here with color, uh, this time on the zoom of the valve. Then we unzoom and put color over the mitral valve to see if there's uh, some degree of mitral um, insufficiency or mitral stenosis. We would then do um, put the line of interrogation from the aorta to the LA to get the left atrial to aorta M mode. Um, we then do the same with the line of interrogation at the tip of the mitral valve and obtain an M mode in order to calculate uh, the shortening fraction and the mass of the um, left ventricle. Uh, we then, um, after that, uh, would do um, um, a posterior sweep in order to get to the tricuspid valve area. Um, and so in this patient, we then try to get color over the tricuspid valve in order to see uh, if there is TR. So you can see here that we see the 2D tricuspid valve and it took me a few times and adjustments of the position before actually seeing. And then finally, once we have that, we obtain color. Um, to see if there is any insufficiency of the tricuspid valve. And then we do um, a Doppler in order to see um, our inflow velocities uh, through. So we do the Doppler really at uh, the entrance of the inflow of, uh, of the tricuspid valve. We then uh, obtain also a CW in order to see if there's tricuspid regurgitation. And we would obtain it even and, and save the clip um, even if there's no TR because we use that to calculate the systolic to the diastolic uh, time ratio. Um, we would then do an interior sweep. Uh, and I believe, yeah, I did it a few times in order to obtain it. We would do an interior sweep in order to visualize the RV outflow track and in order to measure the pulmonary valve. Once we have the interior sweep, uh, we do a zoom over the pulmonary valve to allow us for measurements of the pulmonary valve. 
And so, um, you know, we have to make sure we see the, the leaflet very well and the walls of the interior of the pulmonary valve and the RDL flow tract. We then put color to make sure there's no signs of insufficiency where we see here some mild insufficiency, trivial or stenosis. We then obtain a PW uh, at the RVOT in order to be able to measure the VTI eventually, which will allow us to have an assessment of stroke distance. We then obtain uh, a CW in order to measure pulmonary insufficiency jet in order to have an assessment of uh, RV diastolic pressure. Um, this is another view to try to obtain the pulmonary valve and to be able to measure it. Uh, we then go in the parasternal short axis view and we get a view at the level of the aorta pulmonary valve junction. We then do a zoom on the aortic valve to make sure that it looks tri-leaflet and opens and closed and that there's no signs of stenosis. We then obtain a zoom on the pulmonary valve and then put collar over it. And once we have color, we again obtain a pulse wave Doppler and a continuous wave Doppler for pulmonary insufficiency. We then repeat the M mode aligned between aorta and left atrium for the aorta to LA uh, ratio or LA on the aorta ratio. We then uh, perform, um, we go down on the base of the heart and obtain uh, a few beats at the level of the mitral valve or fish mouth. Um, once we have that, uh, we do um, an M mode in order to uh, do the cross section through the LV in order to measure the shortening fraction and the mass uh, also on this axis. We then go down and obtain a view at the level of the papillary muscle and then eventually at the apex in 2D. We then try to obtain, um, again, the TR um, or the inflow velocities of the right ventricle in the parasternal short axis view. So this is obtaining a PW, a pulse wave Doppler, and this is the one obtaining a continuous wave Doppler where we see a bit of TR here. Then we go into the apical four chamber view. So we want both an RV and an LV focus view. So this is the RV focus view where we uh, attempt to see the entire wall of the RV, the leaflets of the tricuspid valve and the right atrium uh, in order to be able to calculate the fractional air change, but also to do the strain on the right ventricle uh, and to measure the right atrial planimetry uh, as well as some of the sizes of the RV. We then put color and similarly would get a PW and a CW. Um, so CW and eventually uh, PW. We also obtain um, the TAPSI in order to uh, measure. So we try to have the line of interrogation crossing through the apex and going towards the lateral attachment of the tricuspid valve. And then we, open, we obtain a tissue Doppler at the lateral wall of the right ventricle. And this is where I obtain the pulse wave Doppler and the inflow velocity of the RV. We then try to have uh, the left ventricle and we try to have beats where we have the entire wall, including the, the apex. So here you could see that uh, I see my papillary muscle and my wall of my LV, and I'm able uh, to use that to calculate my ejection fraction by Simpson uh, in four chamber. Um, so I tried to take a few views uh, because sometimes they are difficult uh, in order to obtain uh, the RLV and we want to also have as much as possible of the left atrium so that we can do LA volumes. Similarly, we'll do a TDI of the interventricular septum and eventually of the lateral wall of the LV. Uh, and we do the inflow velocities of the left ventricle uh, that you can see here. So again, retrying to do inflow velocity, and then here trying to position myself to do a TDI of the lateral wall of the left ventricle. Then we switch in two chamber view in order to have uh, the possibility of doing the uh, Simpsons biplane. So here I'm trying to uh, attempt a few clips to get the best two chamber view in this particular subject. Uh, and then finally, we try to obtain a three chamber view in 2D and then with color. Uh, so, the, so here I get my three chamber view. So at least for two, three beats. 
uh, we can see here. Uh, and then we obtain color at the lev level of the outflow track. And we want to see ideally inflow and outflow um, um, filling of the LV and then uh, I'll put into my LV outflow track. We then obtain a PW at the level of the LVOT, so pulse wave Doppler, and eventually a CW at the level of the LVOT to make sure there's no sign of stenosis. Uh, and then ideally, we would like to have a pulse wave Doppler inside the cavity and three chamber view in order to measure the isovolumetric relaxation time. So here we see ejection, here we see filling, uh, and then here we see the isovolumetric relaxation time. Then we obtain with AGDR, a uh, high volume rate capture, uh, 3D volume, uh, at least above 28 Hertz of the LV with all the walls of the LV in order to reconstruct the volume. And we attempt, so I tried to take a few clips of the best imaging so that we can get the best walls of the LV in order to reconstruct the LV. Um, and then uh, we try sometimes also to do the reconstruction with a four beat capture. Um, and then here, I'm trying to do the same thing with my right ventricle, uh, 42 hertz, 38 hertz, and I was happy with the quality of my image. So in this particular context, um, I didn't take, uh, oh, I did take a four beat capture from the RV. Then we go in subcostal and try to image the interatrial septum, and we try to put collar on the interatrial septum. In this case, it was quite challenging, and I suspect it will be challenging also in pregnant ladies. We then try to visualize the IVC um, and its collapsibility. Uh, and then we put color on the IVC and subhepatic veins and try to obtain a Doppler um, in the subhepatic vein um, in order to have a sense of if there is a certain degree of retrograde flow. We do the same in obtaining the view of the descending abdominal aorta with color and then obtain a Doppler of um, the descending abdominal aorta. Um, and then um, in some of the patients, we tried to obtain a suprasternal view. In this particular patient, it was uh, quite challenging. So I was able to get some of the descending aorta flow, but ideally we tried to get an ascending and descending aorta flow. Um, and the other things that uh, are not showcased in this, part in this particular study uh, test uh, are if we are able to get um, a pulmonary vein. So you will see it on the website. Uh, we try to get a, a right upper pulmonary vein Doppler so that we can measure the S, the D, and the um, component of atrial, uh, uh, reversion, atrial reversal flow time duration. Um, and uh, for the suprasternal view, uh, what we try to get, um, you will find it under suprasternal views. Um, and so we try to get a suprasternal view like this and ideally get the color, eventually the Doppler and the descending, and then uh, like, for example, the, sorry, a PW ideally in the descending aorta, like such as here, and ideally a PW in the ascending aorta such as um, showcased here. So I invite you to, um, take a look at the section on normal adult echo. Um, and I also, because you will see all the views, uh, including the apical views that we obtain. Um, and so the different elements of the study that we would like to incorporate uh, in this patient population. And I highly recommend that you look at the Sarah B study uh, portal, where you're going to have centralized all the information, especially the ECHO protocol. So please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Um, you can find my information and contact at the end of this page uh, under my name. And then thank you for um, participating in our project at the Neocardio Lab and have a great day.